Hi everyone, today let's talk about penny stock. The key to trading penny stock is finding momentum before it happens and then be patient. I don't normally like penny stocks because it's so speculative and ultra risky. It can spike up but nose dive faster than it went up. It is important to understand that trading penny stocks via over the counter or OTC is not the same as trading blue chips on the NASDAQ or NYSE. But I'm confident to share with you this one stock that I think will easily 5x to 10x by the end of the year. I've been trading over the past 25 years and never in our history has there been so many multi backers coming from the OTC market. OTC gets bad rap because of the pump and dump scheme back in the 1980s. In this video, I will share with you the new catalysts that are driving up ALPP up higher in its share price and why you might want to consider getting into it before it's too late. So stick around. <music> So at a cup, that's hello in Thai and welcome to Quantum Finance. My name is Anthony and I'm a former engineer and data analytics turned entrepreneur and investor. In my prior career, I was very successful in creating predictive models for Fortune 500 companies in Silicon Valley using historical data to predict future outcomes. I applied my knowledge to my own portfolio and in the past 12 months, grew it more than 550%. In this channel, I focus on high growth and disruptive technology stocks for short-term momentum trades and long-term investments. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back and thank you for your support. Please help us grow this channel by hitting the sub button below. Make sure to hit the notification button so you get my latest video update. While you're at it, do hit and like and share the video. I will see you down there. Please note that this video is for entertainment purpose only. I'm not licensed. However, that does not mean that I won't present you with facts and trading ideas that will supercharge up your portfolio. No BS and straight to the point. So let's get right into it. So what is ALPP or Alpine 4 Holdings all about? Alpine has this DSF model. It is a strategy it used to acquire and hold unique position companies that fits into one of three categories. D for drivers, S for stabilizers and F for facilitators or DSF. Driver companies are in emerging markets that have an enormous upside potential for revenue and profits and that has a significant opportunity to capture the market shares. These type of acquisitions are typically exciting pre-revenue companies. Alpine recently acquired Impossible Aerospace, Spectrum eBoss and Altia. Stabilizers. These are companies that have the stickiness customers with consistent revenue and solid net profits. These acquisitions have included Excel Fabrication, Morris Sheet Metal and Deluxe Sheet Metal that currently resides in this category. Facilitator. This is where companies provide products and services that within the Alpine 4 subsidiary companies can use as leverage to create a competitive advantage. Alpine 4 calls this their secret sauce. Alpine 4's greatest competitive advantage is its highly diversified business structure that brings resources, planning, technology, and capacity that its competitors do not have access to. For instance, its quality circuit assembly that resides in the facilitator category can move from one category to another where it's best served. This fluidity allows Alpine 4 to adapt within market and industry conditions. Alpine 4 calls this SIDE or SIDE, which stands for the four principles at the core of its business strategy. S for synergy, I for innovation, D for drive, and E for excellence. This is how Alpine 4 aggressively pursue opportunities within and across vertical markets. Their goal is not only to drive industry standards, but also to increase value for its shareholders. As of today, Alpine Holdings or ALPP close at $8.05 or up 44.5 cents for a 5.52% gain. It traded on a 77% of normal volume. Its MACD is very bullish, its RSI is rising, and it's in the overbought territory. ALPP has a clear trading pattern here. If you look closely, every time it has a new uptrend, it will form an upward step by trading sideways, consolidate to form a support base before moving on to the next uptrend. It repeats over and over. Overall, the trend is moving higher. So right now, it's probably a good time to get in as it starts to form its next consolidation base with the anticipation of the next momentum run. I do have to disclose that I own ALPP. I got in when it's at the $4 range. Within a week, I have already doubled my investment. So what has been driving the rally in ALPP? In December 2020, ALPP acquired Impossible Aerospace. The acquisition also brought Impossible Aerospace founder Spencer Gore into the ALPP family. Spencer previously served as a battery design engineer at Tesla Motors, where he developed the world's longest range electric vehicle battery for the Model S. His experience at both Tesla and SpaceX will help Impossible Aerospace execute on the growing demand from the US Air Force for domestic made electric aircraft. The next catalyst is huge. It is the uplisting from the OTC to the NASDAQ. ALPP is trending up as the company prepares to uplist from over-the-counter or OTC to NASDAQ. This OTC to NASDAQ plays are some of the best plays in the market as once the company hit the NASDAQ, institutions can more easily purchase shares. Not only that, investors and big institutions will gain more confidence to buy ALPP shares that is viewed less risky than trading on the OTC. It will create more liquidity. The exact date of NASDAQ listing is to be announced, so expect trading volume to increase. Another bet on ALPP is on the management team and its founder and 
CEO Kent Wilson. He's an expert on DMAIC or Six Sigma and Lean proficiencies. Jack Walsh used the same principle to build GE during his tenure. I'm very familiar with these skill sets as an engineer and senior management as they're critical to my success when I ran my own companies. Once this stock is listed on NASDAQ, I do see this becoming $20 to $25 stock easily. And I can see this 5x to 10x by the end of the year. Let me know what you think of ALPP and its potential. Should you buy or should you wait? In my opinion, it's a buy right now. So get in before it's too late. I have included a video clip of Kent Wilson, founder, CEO, and president of Alpine 4 Holdings. You can listen to him speak about the company's vision at a 2020 shareholders meeting that took place this February 5th, 2021. Enjoy. All right. So we, over the last really year, and especially over the last two months, we have gained huge amounts of shareholders throughout the world, not just the United States. Uh, for those of you who are joining us from Europe and Asia and and uh, the Middle East, we thank you so much. We, we are so happy that you've decided to invest in Alpine 4, and uh, we are honored to have you as shareholders. Just to give you a little background, um, we are a Really, we coin ourselves as a leading operator of micro um, and small cap companies. And the reason we chose to go after those type of companies is there's a lot of hidden potential and gems that are locked up in those companies. And so when we buy them, there's tons of low-hanging fruit that you just don't get from a profit, operational, uh, efficiency standards that you can't get in you know, buying other companies. So we've really curtailed our investment strategy and our acquisition strategy around that. We focus on companies between five and $50 million. And we found that if you look at the price we've been paying for businesses, it's very reasonable. Um, I came out of the uh, private equity world, world uh, to a certain degree. And I can tell you when we buy companies at three to four to five times their multiple earnings, uh, that's a tremendous value for shareholders so that will translate into higher profits in the future and will honestly allow us to potentially pay dividends in the future as well too so I hope if you're a dividend investor and a value investor you'll get excited about that and um, it's just kind of ingrained into our DNA right now we have four major holding silos and that is a4 construction services which is more sheet metal uh, deluxe sheet metal and Excel fabrication located in Indiana, South Bend, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and uh, Twin Falls, Idaho. Uh, we have A4 Manufacturing, which right now consists of Quality Circuit Assembly, which owns a facility in San Jose and also in Arkansas. Uh, they do some pretty exciting stuff. If you've seen some of our press releases, uh, we're talking about Tesla and some other companies that in that market that uh, you know we, we do modest work for. Um, other big name companies in that area as well. We have A4 Technologies, which consists of Altia and Spectrum, EBOS. And then finally, most of you guys know, we, we have A4 Aerospace, which consists of Impossible Aerospace and Bayou. Uh, those two companies are what we consider driver companies. Uh, they're very uh, advanced IP, uh, intellectual property for the company, and we think there's going to be large uh, uh, potential for revenue in the, in, near, in the near and distant future as well. Uh, with both of those uh, platforms. So, all right, next slide. So, we've been talking a lot about the NASDAQ. Most of the questions that we've gotten from you guys are what is the next step for the NASDAQ? Um, we, we, it's a little bit convoluted, but yet it's fairly straightforward. So, there's a lot of different agencies that we have to comply with. Uh, you have the state of Delaware. You have NASDAQ, of course, you have the SEC, and you have FINRA. And so um, what we really do have to do is kind of timeline these events into one uniform process, which is, as Jeff and, and the board will tell you, is never really an easy thing, but we're, we have been working fairly well with it. So uh, the fact, first step, once we have the shareholder meeting and we decide uh, and can make the decision if we're going to have to do a reverse or an AS, uh, offer a share increase, um, which I can tell you right now at this point, we have the, uh, the, uh, the support to do an authorized share increase, so that's good. Um, we would effectuate that with the state of Delaware, okay? And that takes, you know, a few days to a week to get that done with them. As far as the next step, we would notify the NASDAQ and FINRA of the authorized share increase, and that would allow us to uh, finalize our I wouldn't say application, but the, the, the final step in the process to get them to sign off on that, um, that, uh, that move. And then they will give us a date 
that we will move our shares from the OTC QB to the NASDAQ, and that can take a few days as well. And then finally, we gain acceptance from NASDAQ and FINRA to list on that date. Obviously, we will update the shareholders, you know, pretty much in the moment when that happens. I would expect that to happen, you know, within the next week to two weeks, best case scenario week, worst case scenario, you know, two weeks. But again, we are at the mercy of four different reporting agencies to give us uh, their approval on that. And it can be a little bit like herding cats into a cage. So um, we are very pleased with where we're at. I shouldn't express that we have any uh, you know, dissatisfaction with the process. All these agencies have done a great job and we're definitely moving towards that direction. Okay, next slide. So a lot of people have asked me, you know, why, what are some of the benefits of being on the NASDAQ? And, you know, from a guy that, that has done a lot of turnarounds in my past, having an assemblance of order and process really, really uh, benefits as well. So I gave two overarching goals when we set out on this mission to uplist uh, actually a year ago. Um, to the, we, at the time we were thinking the New York Stock Exchange, but the NASDAQ was fine as well. And I wanted to really have our company broadly represent our shareholder base. What I didn't want was a, a board of directors that, um, a group of staunchy old men, right? <laughs> and so what I wanted is a, a, a broadly represented shareholder or, um, uh, board base. And so to get that, we needed to add five new independent members and to, accomplish that, we set out on a mission to find uh, a diverse representation. So we will be announcing who these people are in the next uh, probably week uh, to the shareholders. I think you'll be very pleased on that. Uh, in conjunction with their experience in representing what I feel is a broad uh, representation of work experience, I also wanted them to be very diverse. Um, and so the NASDAQ gave some guidance on this in uh, December of um, 2020. And it really came around is they want diversity on the board and that can be from a gender base or an ethnicity base. And we, I can tell you that we've met that and exceeded their rules for 2023 from the get go. Uh, what does that mean for us at, uh, at Alpine 4? You guys will have, our shareholders, have a much larger representation of voice from uh, uh, various work industries and also, uh, you know, uh, gender and ethnicity on the board as well. So we feel that that will be very valuable, especially in the in, in the day and age that we live in. So we're happy to please. We're very pleased to say that we have not only met the NASDAQ 2023 requirements, we've exceeded it. So, um, all right, next slide. Next slide. Corporate governance. This is a big one, and, and shareholders really want to know what is the value of this. When you move to the NASDAQ, you really have to have what's called an audit committee and a compensation committee. And the rules of those are essentially providing clarity and assurance that, um, and you can thank Enron for this stuff, but uh, have assurance that what is being reported is not something that is necessarily being mandated by the executive team, but has an oversight process to it. So the independent board members will be in charge of the audit committee and assuring that what is being presented from the uh, auditors and our financial accounting team has been vetted and again approved so that we can disseminate that to the shareholder base. That is a requirement of the NASDAQ and we're happy to comply with it. The compensation committee is really having a third party, uh, independent party review the base metrics for compensation for guys like myself, guys like myself on the executive team and ensure that it meets um, the requirements of the company, but also the perception and, and needs of the public, and there's a, a baseline for it. So I think that as a shareholder, myself, if I was investing in a different company, I would very much want to know how the dollars are being spent, and I think these two items and these corporate governance uh, action committees will give you guys a lot of peace of mind. Okay, so next slide. Institutional investors. I, I said this a year ago uh, to the shareholders. If we want to achieve not only higher prices, and you know we're thrilled at where we're at today, but I think we can go a lot farther. But if we want to achieve stability in those high prices and not experience larger dips, 
we need institutional investors. And institutional investors are in for the long, the long term, like myself and the board and the executive team, which I got to tell you, not one of us has sold shares um, since inception. I hope that gives you guys confidence that we believe in the company. Uh, it doesn't mean at some point we want to, won't want to sell shares, but I'm telling you that we have been very strategic in it and we believe in the value of Alpine 4. And I hope you understand that um, that's been our model, uh, that's been a, kind of our mindset since the beginning. Okay. Yeah, so, seven years. Yeah. Wow. So institutional investors are typically banks and insurance companies and pension funds and hedge funds and endowments and mutual funds. We cannot attract those uh, groups on the OTC QB, or it would be very rare. Once we get to the NASDAQ, that opens up my ability to attract those funds, and what we will see from that is you know, more uh, streamlined approach and regularity in our stock price. Um, that may take some time to get there, but and that's not, you know, diminishing anything that's gone on over the last few months, but it will enhance what's going on. And actually, I think will add to higher shareholder price, uh, value um, in our price per share. So, all right, next one. All right, proper capitalization. As, as a turnaround guy from 2002 to 2010, I can't tell you how important this is, you guys. Um, you saw last Friday we filed for a $170 million shelf registration statement. That will allow us to do a lot of things structurally on the balance sheet that I think will be very exciting for shareholders. A, cost of capital. If you look at our interest rate right now, it's pretty high. Uh, we spend a lot of money on interest, and it's because we debt financed a lot of our businesses. And that's okay. They're relatively attractive pricing on it. But a lower cost of capital is going to allow us to do some pretty great things, especially when it comes to hedge funds and other groups buying into Alpine Pool. It will also allow us to bring in, I mean, you've seen some of the guys that we brought in recently, uh, Larry Zick, uh, Spencer Gore, Daniel from Bayou. Um, all those guys um, are really bright people. And if we want to keep growing and attract the best talent, we need a corporate ESOP plan that can allow us to do that. That, I know, will deliver sh a higher shareholder value. And that, um, the, other, the third one, I can't understate this, is it will allow me to deliver on some of the most exciting companies out there. And I think that you've seen what our two driver companies, Impossible and Value, have done to our stock price. Think of what I can do with a war chest of $170 million. It's going to get exciting in 2021 and 2022. And I hope that you guys are excited as much as we are. So, um, you know, we talk about the proper capitalization, and I've let through a lot of this, but the uses of equity will really be driven to bring down our cost of interest and our, uh, to in a better uh, cost of capital. And it will also allow us to increase profitability and productivity. Um, I can tell you that we've invested in some machinery over the last year that has gained huge uh, technology customers for us. And that profitability is going to uh, really drive QCA's um, uh, uh, profitability much larger. And if we have uh, the ability to facilitate that with um, the shelf registration statement, we'll be able to do some pretty good things that will uh, drive revenue, drive profitability, and equate to higher shareholder pricing. Okay, so next slide. All right, so a lot of you are new to our business model, and you know, I came up with DSF from years as a management consultant doing turnarounds, and one thing that I found in businesses over the years that drove generational wealth and stability was if they had three components of their, um, of their, uh, their company. And it was, they had to have, and we've taken this and built it into a business of acquisition, but during my time of turnaround, you had to have a, they had either a product that was a driver, which was something that was excitable, they would get consumers bought in, um, had high profit dollars and could drive a lot of revenue. They always had a product or service that was a stabilizer, that was their anchor, it kind of kept them afloat during lean times. And they always had a facilitator product that bridged the two together. We have built a business around it. And I think it was very largely overlooked up until we acquired Impossible Aerospace. When you combine DSF and our ability to look at businesses and drive baseline revenue, and then every so often do a facilitator like QCA and come in and create a competitive advantage, I, I regularly get calls from competitors asking us how we do things. And that's a testament to the business model. 
and a driver company and look what the value of uh, Impossible and Value have done to the value of our stock. It is that excitable moment in time that allows a company like Alpine Ford to provide a product or service to the market that is vast, it's large, and it has huge outside potential. So that's driver, stabilizer, facilitator. And when you put them together, it's very powerful. And if you like what we've done so far, just wait and see what we're going to do in the future with it. All right, next slide. All right, our vision. Um, our goal is to drive Alpine 4 into a leading, multifaceted holding company with uh, products and services that are diverse. But our greatest competitive advantage, and this is what makes us unique across the spectrum, is our greatest competitive advantage is we are diverse in nature, um, highly diversified, yet we work together as a team. And I cannot tell you how many gems of genius ideas have come out of our thought process because all of our division presidents get together and talk about their problems. And one other thing I learned during my days of turnarounds was people don't know what they don't know until they know. And people live in a box. If you're in construction and you're in, say, sheet metal, you know that industry very well. But when we've able to solve common problems that competitors can't fix out because they're talking with a company that, say, does you know electronic circuit boards and they figured out a production process already and perfected it that they've been able to take into a sheet metal you know, organization and give a competitive advantage. And that's what we do. It's our greatest competitive advantage, and we're excited about how that will, you know, uh, curtailed into the future. So, uh, and we're also a culture of innovation. I have built in, baked into this company that we no idea is really a bad idea. We want to vet them out, talk about them. We want to be innovative. We want to put dollars behind creating technology and being different. Different to the point where. You know, we don't ever want to be bleeding edge, but we want to be leading edge in things. And that innovation of, uh, you know, by culture is is something that makes Alpine Four very unique. Okay, so next slide. What do we look for in acquisition? This was a common question. All right, one, it needs to have some synergistic relevance to our DSF business model. We're not out buying every company. We're buying companies that have a lot of low hanging fruit, and that's number two. Um, we want to see stuff that has a great value for us. Um, we want companies that we know can grow to $25 million, at least in revenue, if not more. If they can't, we're not really interested in that company. And uh, those are kind of our synergistic targets. And they fall in a multitude of different categories. Construction services, it has to be commercial. We won't deal with residential. Uh, we like manufacturing, typically contract manufacturing. Um, but there are other manufacturer verticals that we're currently looking at. Uh, we like, obviously, technology. Uh, we have Spectrum, which we're building on internally. If you guys don't know much about Spectrum, it is a business operating system. We think it will fundamentally change how businesses do business, and it's tethered to a blockchain ledger system, which when you look at the needs of small cap and uh, micro cap companies that are public, we think that having that blockchain ledger system tied to an ERP or business management system it will probably lower their auditing cost by 25% simply operating through Spectrum. So uh, we think there's a large market for it, and as we get ready to release it, it's taken a lot longer than we want, but again, we are perfecting it, and we're using it internally, and we expect to have it you know, corporate-wide at all of our subsidiaries sometime in 2022. We are currently using it at two of our subsidiaries here uh, locally uh, in within Alpine 4, I should say, and we're very excited about the, the potential of it. Next slide. All right, so if you want to wrap your head around what's available in our current market space, A4 Construction uh, Services uh, resides in a $620 billion market. That's the macro, right? And so when you break it down to small cap, which is really where we're, we reside, it's $90 billion. And when you break it down to our core market, of uh, really what we seek as obtainable businesses to go after and acquire, it's $5 billion. So it's by far you know, a very vast and large uh, market for us, and we're very excited about it. A4 Manufacturing, kind of the same thing, a $2.2 trillion market in the United States. Our market, our small cap is about $45 billion, and our core market is about $2 billion. Uh, A4 Tech, you know, the, and there's a, tech is a broad term, but the, uh, the, the tech market that we 
I really want to go after is a one point one point seven trillion dollar market, uh, a small cap market of fourteen billion, and a core market for us of about three hundred ninety million. And then obviously A4 Aerospace. Uh, a newly formed uh, holding company that we're, we're forming to hold value and impossible. That's about a $1.5 trillion market for us. Small cap market is $10 billion, and we think our core market is $2 billion. When you add all that up, if you look at our core market, area where we can grow this company into is really $9.39 billion. And honestly, it could be larger than that, maybe a little bit smaller, but I hope that number gets you excited. And we're laying the foundation with Spectrum, the capitalization of the company, to go after it and go after it hard. Okay, next slide. All right, let me move something here. <laughs> A lot of questions around 2021, and we're updating this continuously. So for 2021, you're looking at a revenue in excess of $70 million. Um, and if you look at the breakdown by quarter, it's really starting to escalate in Q3 and Q4. Um, we're looking at about $9.2 million in Q1, which is pretty substantial growth over Q1 last year, $16.5 million in Q2, $21.5 million in Q3, and 28 million in Q4. And where is this being driven from? We're seeing some pretty decent comeback of lost revenue from 2021 and what we really lost in, um, in uh, not lost, but we're delayed, if you will, in revenue uh, due to shutdowns of COVID starting to come back, which is, it's great to see that business wasn't fully lost. And then um, acquisitions. I can tell you if you look at the at the bars there, you can see the A4 manufacturing is growing pretty rapidly. That's where the bulk of the revenue is going to come from in Q uh, Q3, possibly Q2, depending on. And that's really tied around some acquisitions that we're looking at that we're getting to the point where it's becoming more substantive. We'll obviously update you guys as we get closer to that. Um, and uh, we're excited about what's holding. But we're a company that's going to double in size uh, in 2021, if not even farther. And that's just with known acquisitions that we are currently doing DD on, due diligence on. So, all right, so next slide. You know, that's in point, right? DSF, in recent months, the value of our DSF model has really shown a strength, and we're just getting started. A growth, we're at Alpine Ford, just to take away from you guys, we're a growth company. Revenues are expected to grow at above 20% annually for the foreseeable future. And that's really not even considering, uh, that's a very conservative number looking at just some organic growth and mild acquisitions. If we pull off some of the ones we're looking at right now, it could grow dramatically above that. Uh, and we're a company of solutions. We're, because we're a company of innovation, we regularly look to solve industry problems before our competitors even know about it or even know it's a problem, which gives our subsidiaries a unique and competitive advantage that just can't be duplicated. Okay. I think this is a little bit of a summary of the company. If you're new to us, we were founded in 2014. We made our first acquisition in 2016 of Quality Circuit Assembly. We did a, regist a four registration statement to go public. 2018 to 19, we completed three acquisitions. American Precision Fabricators, which has now been rolled into Quality Circuit Assembly. More sheet metal and deluxe sheet metal. Uh, and the company has been, you know, we started in those years uh, building our blockchain-based uh, ERP called Spectrum EVOS. And in 2020, uh, we completed three acquisitions, Impossible Aerospace, Excel Fabrication, and Bayou. Although Bayou just closed, we did 99% of the bulk in 2020, and we're considering it closed to that. So what, what's the takeaway on this is the proof is always in the pudding, right? People like to talk, a lot of companies like to talk about what they're doing, but where's the evidence of it? Alpine 4 has delivered and continuously delivers uh, on its ability to uh, drive our business model at DSF. And if you're excited about it, like I know all we are, we, we will continue to deliver on this and it's only going to get better. Every time we add a company to it, we get a little bit bigger and it becomes a little bit easier to do another big company. And it's a snowball effect. So I anticipate us really growing exponentially over the next two to three years, and I wouldn't be surprised if we hit the billion-dollar mark within three to five years. So exciting times here, and um, we can go to, I think, the final slide, which I believe is just a thank you.
So there you have it. If you find the content of value, please leave a comment below. Do share, like, and subscribe if you have not already done so. Also hit the notification bell for my next video. Now let's go make some moolahs.